Well, my title today is called Prayer and Asking Amiss, but the truth of it is really not just primarily focused on prayer, but it's focused on um, what tends to be the subject that we all have been just sort of melting into now for some time, and that is uh, the things of his heart, the things that are important to Jesus, the things that are um, important to the Father. and um, But we find that same truth in this area of prayer. And, uh, and, and I thank the Lord for the scriptures that are ever faithful, not just to subjects in the Bible, such as prayer, but are ever faithful to the eternal things that will always be true and should always be true in us and in others. And uh, I will say this in advance, I've many times heard your prayers, and I know that many of you already know this, and this is, this is how you pray, and I'm blessed by that. But there are those who it might bless them to hear more, maybe even to hear more scriptures pertaining to it. So I love you, and I want to just share this with you. I want to start with John 14, <clears throat> and uh, John 14 and verse 14. And it says, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Um, you know, usually when we read what Jesus said about prayer, uh, we immediately set out to, you know, to pray for things that are, you know, the things that are important to us. And, um, you know, we, we consider the, the, our earthly needs and our earthly life, and we consider our loved ones and and all of the, the things that pertain to their life. Um, but really and truly, just a simple search of the scriptures begins to show us and to reveal something to us. And that is that maybe we have misunderstood Jesus when he's spoken of prayer and what he meant by uh, verse 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Um, so I want to... Based on the title, I want to just uh, have us read James chapter 4, and verse 1 through 3. And uh, I, all the scriptures that I'll be sharing today, I know that all of you are very familiar with. James 4, verse 1. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lust that war in your members? You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you have not, because you ask not. You ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that you, that you may consume it upon your lust. And so here we are given the reality that it is possible to ask, according to, to uh, John 14, 14. It is possible to ask and to not receive. Um, and the, the word that really stuck out to me in James was the word that. Uh, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. So these verses, that, that's our thing. That's what it's telling us. We're asking for something that will satisfy our desires. And the word lust, most of you know this, but the word lust isn't the normal word that, that we use nowadays. It, it's the word that simply means desires. It's not a sexual or a, that kind of word uh, connotation to it. It is primarily focused upon just us wanting our desires. <clears throat> and so, um, you know, someone might say, well, I thought that was what uh, God in prayer was all about, that you get to ask God for what you desire. Um, so I want to look at, I want to expand on this now. Look in uh, John 16 and verse 24. John 16 and 24 says this, Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Remember the last verse said to ask in his name. You've asked nothing in my name, Ask and you shall receive. Okay, so just a little couple of sentences here that I wrote down. Whatever prayers the disciples were praying, Jesus said that up to this point they have not asked in his name. It means you are asking nothing in the name of Jesus or for the benefit 
of Jesus. So, you know, God, that's just a fact. God listens to our prayers. Uh, but I, when I say that, I don't mean that he hears all of our prayers and he answers all of our prayers, every prayer, and that uh, it doesn't matter what we offer up. He hears that. He hears them. He hears them and he listens and he weighs our prayers. He weighs our prayers. He does it to see really of what sort of what sort those prayers are. In other words, he's not just um, measuring them by the thing for which we ask. He's not just measuring it by what we ask, but the reason for which we ask. Okay, so maybe, <clears throat> maybe some of you that's a little expansion on that. That it, he's yes, he weighs and measures our prayers, but not just he's not just measuring what we're asking for, but he's measuring the reason we're asking for, the reason behind. It. What is our motivation? What's the thing that moves us? So I wrote this, for, for Jesus to say you have asked nothing in my name means you have asked nothing in my interests. This would mean that we are actually asking in our own name for our own personal interest based on things that correspond directly back to us. Things that really, even when we're asking for others many times, it has a corresponding thing back to us. Um, so, we, we began with uh, John 14, verse 14, but um, I want to read that verse now in context. I, wanna, I want us to put the, the verse before it, and then read verse 14 again. And that's verse 13. And it says this, this is John 14, verse 13 and 14. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do that that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Oh, my Lord, there it is. Whatever you ask, I will do it, because I want the Father, and this is Jesus saying this, because I want the Father to be glorified in the Son. If, and then here's the verse we began with immediately following this. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. He means anything that has... Uh, that, that is not just self-focused, um, but has the Father's and the Son's interest for one another, the relationship that they have, and the relationship that they want to build into us. Um, in other words, <clears throat> for example, I could pray as Randy in earth, a, God, a, a creature that God made in the earth named Randy. Uh, I could pray that, Randy Nussbaum prays this, or I could pray as, well, I could pray as his body. I pray for what, you know, what his interests are. I could pray as his bride, as, as the wife of the Lamb. I could pray as a son by Jesus Christ. All of that focused on what it, what it is that they are, their interests are. Where, what did they want to see accomplished? What did they really desire in a situation? Uh, I've used this example many times, and I'm, I'm sure that uh, Kelly doesn't mind that I use it. But I, you know, one time we were getting ready to do a conference in Ireland, and she came to me and she said, "Oh, you know, be praying, and you know, I just, I just want this conference to be go smoothly and just to be a blessing to everybody and everyone to leave just to, with great happy hearts." And I said, "Well, what if the Lord doesn't want that?" And you know, of course, we all think, "Well, that's exactly what He wants." But what if He, what if He wants to deal with us? What if it, it really makes us miserable? But it's His Spirit, and He is. He is pointing out things in us that need to be removed and so that there can be more room in us for the Son and the Son towards the Father. So, um, verse 14 just says, you know, to ask, pray and, you know, I'll give you whatever you ask. But uh, verse 13 is adding this thing that um, 
Whatever you pray, uh, let me just read it. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. But he means anything within the scope of the eternal, of bring, being brought into conformity to Jesus so that the Father would receive an increase of Christ. Or John's prayer, I must, he must increase and I must decrease. Or Paul's prayer, I am crucified that Christ may live. All of that eternal, all of that will continue throughout all ages to come to the glory of the Father that he gets his Son in us and through us. So um, I wrote this, to ask in Jesus' name is to ask that by which the Father may be glorified in the Son. In other words, seeking the interests of the Father concerning His Son. Okay, so um, let's look in Luke chapter 11. And we'll just look at verse 1 and 2 first. And it came to pass that as He was praying in a certain place, when He ceased, one of the, His disciples said unto Him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Wow. Praise God. True disciples ask Jesus to teach them to pray. Praise God. And, you know, if Jesus is going to teach us, to pray, he's going to teach us correctly. All right, so this is really good now. I want to give you sort of an example of that by using a, a Matthew's version of that same thing. Um, Jesus says, this is uh, Matthew 6, starting with verse 7. But when you pray, so, so notice, this is Jesus talking about prayer, okay? When you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Uh, that's one part of the prayer. But then he says, Be not therefore liken unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. After this manner therefore pray. What? I hope you got that. He's saying um, that... Basically, he's saying, I'm not telling you to just pray for all of your this and that and whatever. He's saying, your father knows what you have need of before you even ask him. He said, but pray this in this manner. Pray. This is the manner you should be praying. Our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. <clears throat> thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those, though our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> so, all right. So, he's saying, basically, <clears throat> pray, for, pray for kingdom things. All right. Well, you remember that uh, a couple of the disciples came to Jesus and wanted to ask him a special prayer request. They brought their mother. Um, <clears throat> and um, I, I won't read the whole thing. But James and John bring their mother and they say, Mom, ask Jesus if we can sit on the right hand and on the left. So, so, so Mom speaks up and she says, Oh, you know, they're good boys. And they've got a lot going in the Lord. I noticed that you take them to special things along with Peter. So I'm asking you kingdom, a kingdom thing, Jesus. Let them sit in your kingdom. <laughs> Let one sit on your right hand and one on your left. Um, and Jesus goes, you know, it's not, this is not mine to give. This, is, this, is, this belongs to those prepared by the Father. For that place, this is this isn't a proper request. If you're that one, the Father will see to it that you're there. But it's not a, that shouldn't be your prayer request. That should be your lifelong pursuit to be exactly 
what he wants, the Father wants by the Son. So, um, so I wrote this. James and John asked for the kingdom. It sounds noble, but it was full of self-interest. Um, we pray thy kingdom come. Why? So that his will can be done. Our prayers, sadly, our prayers are fed from the wrong tree and from the wrong garden. The first garden was Eden, wherein stood the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Both good and evil were on the same tree. We tend to pray for God to circumvent what is bad or evil, yet bring to us what is good. The other garden was Gethsemane, where Jesus prayed, Not my will, but Father thine be done. It was a prayer having the interests of God before his own. Okay, so... Um, I'm running short here, so I'm just going <laughs> to... John, John 15, Jesus again addresses prayer, um, but he's talking about it in relationship to him being the vine and us being the branch. So what do we, what do we pray? Uh, he says, I am the vine... This is John 15, verse 5, 7, and 16. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. Wow! This is saying stay in Jesus. Let the life flow of the life of Jesus stay in you and you will ask the right stuff. Um, uh, you, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. Well, what fruit? The fruit that came out of the vine and into our branch. Um, and that your fruit might remain that... Whatsoever you ask of my, the Father in my name, he will give it to you. What is the fruit? It's the, of abiding in him so that his life will abide in us. I have a really good example here, and this is my last couple of scriptures. This is just a wonderful example also. This is Paul, and this is how he talks about these things. So this is Ephesians uh, verse, uh, chapter 6. Verse 18 through 21. And so he's talking about prayer. I just love this. Now listen carefully. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. So, so far, all he said is do a lot of praying for others. But listen, and for me, okay, so now he's saying, well, pray for me. That utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So there he's saying, this is for others, so that they'll get the gospel, they'll get the truth, they'll, they'll receive of the, the Spirit. Now listen to what he says next about, really about praying for himself. Um, verse 21. But that you may, uh, that you also may know my affairs and how I do. Okay, so he's talking about prayer. So now he's going to talk about his affairs and what um, and how he's doing. So I'm going to read again. But that you may also know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things. He doesn't take. He's, yes, he's got stuff going on. He's got things that he has to do with. And yet, he won't say, now pray for this little thing and that thing and this and that. He says, I'll let Tychicus tell you about those things. He won't declare himself. He's just declaring, I'm praying for, you know, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. And then finally, um, Ephesians 4.29 says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying or building up others, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Oh, well, I oh, hope this has been a blessing to you, but it just is that thing that I'm, I began with. It just is the thing that constantly everything keeps pointing back to something eternal in the Father and in the Son. And we've been brought into that. That's our relationship. That's our life. Our life is the Son. Our, our Father is the Father. Uh, our uh, relationship is eternal. And it has to do not with them focusing on 
me, but me focusing on him, and then our needs will be met. Seek first the kingdom, and then I'll take care of that. And it's always that. It's always a spirit, a certain way of approach. And the way of approach is always one that really, really has the Lord and wants, as it were, to be at his feet and to hear his heart for the Father and be able to pour that out and pour out on Jesus' feet. So let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you that we, we um, want to grow more in all things that pertain to life and godliness. We want to be grow up into one head, one who is the head, and, and let everything flow down from him. We want to be swallowed up of life. We want to be in an eternal relationship with you and not just a relationship based on my needs or their needs or, or whatever, but a relationship built on let their need be greater, Christ in them, the hope of glory. Let my need, the greatest of all needs, be Christ in me, the hope of glory. And that toward that end we pour it out. Father, I thank you for these that I get to meet with like this whose, whose prayers I have heard and been deeply touched and have heard that spirit time and time again and a desire for more of the eternal to fill us, to overtake us, to overshadow us, just as it did with Mary, the mother of Jesus, the spirit overshadowing her until Jesus came out of her. And that's what we want. That's what we ask. That's our prayer. And we ask it not in our name. We ask it in the name of Jesus and in the interest of Jesus and in the interest of you, Father, that you may be glorified in the Son. So we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Praise God.